Magandang gabi po Wednesday na naman. Happy midweek and uh, a beautiful evening before Thanksgiving. From the word itself, Thanksgiving. Kaya yeah, thank you sa mga nag-give doon sa aming uh, relief operation sa Philippines. And uh, maraming sa lahat sa nagtiwala at uh, pagpalaing kayo ng Diyos sa uh, napakaganda niyong mga puso. At uh, welcome po, welcome. Welcome ulit dito sa aming Wednesday service or Wednesday sermon or uh, walk through the Bible. <clears throat> sa gabing ito, napakaganda po ng pag-uusapan natin. Nasa 52 weeks journey of a lifetime po tayo, ang series po na ito ay walk through the Bible. Tapos na tayo sa Pentateuch, ang first five books. Nandito na po tayo sa t- next 12 historical books. Tapos na tayo sa Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. And uh, first Samuel, second Samuel, <clears throat> and then first Kings, second Kings, and Chronicles. Sa uh, gabi ito, pag-usapan natin po dalawang libro. Ang libro, Book of Ezra, and a uh, Book of Nehemiah. It's about repentance, renewal, and rebuilding. So lesson number thirteen na po tayo sa fifty-two lessons. No, week number 13 sa 52 weeks. Wow, ang bilis ng panahon. Halain nyo, uh, kasubaybay nyo lang uh, every Wednesday sa <laughs> sa mga videos natin. Eh, matatapos yan ang basahin yung Biblia. Pero paalala lamang po na fast cut lang ito. Kung baga summary at uh, yung details pa rin ay uh, naaayon pa rin po sa pagpupursigin niyo at sa inyong interes na basahin ano, ang salita ng Diyos. Kaya sa gabing ito, eh, pag-usapan natin no, um, Book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Alam niyo po, the books of, the books of Ezra at uh, itong si Nehemiah eh, eh, at saka yung part ng Esther, eh, na- na-cover na yung last century ng Old Testament history. Alam niyo, si Ezra and Nehemiah, eh, sila yung uh, kumbaga, nag, uh, nagkwento sa atin, no? yung uh, return of the remnant to Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the city. Nako, napakagandang basahin nitong mga libro do kasi historical eh, no? At mas maintindihan mo pag binasa mo yung New Testament kasi madami kang makikita dito na oh, kaya pala, kaya pala ganun, no? Alam niyo about 50 years after the fall of Jerusalem, alam naman natin na Nauna yung Northern Kingdom na capture, tapos uh, sumunod yung uh, Southern Kingdom. The Jews came under the Persian rule when the Persians conquered the Babylonians. So alam naman natin na naunang sumakop sa kanila yung mga Babylonians. Diba? Si King Nebuchadnezzar, tapos yung Persians, tinalo nila yung mga Babylonians. So, sino ba itong mga Persians? Ito yung mga Iranians ngayon. Sino yung mga Babylonians noon? Ito yung mga Arab nations. No? Particularly, yung bandang Iraq yan eh. Okay? So, ano yung nangyari? So, ang bago nila mga masters ngayon ay mga Persians. No? In doing so, they took over all the Babylonian subjects, including the Jews. So, nung yung mga Persians, ah, syempre, since natalo nila ang mga Babylonians, eh, nag- sila na yung bagong empire. So, they took over sa lahat ng pagmamayari, lahat ng mga minamanage, kasama ang mga Hudyo. Ang tanong, bakit hindi na Israelites ang tawag sa kanila? Bakit mga Jews na? May sakutin natin yan. In uh, 538 BC, the Persian King Cyrus, nako, sikat na sikat to, no, he issued a decree. No, eto, napakagandang decree na in niya. No, permitting and encouraging all people in exile in his domain to, retain, to return to their homelands. Wow! Naalala nyo, nag-capture sila ng Babylonians no? at uh, pinadala sila sa baga naging mga OFW sila, yung mga matatalino, matitikas, mga malalakas. At uh, sila ay uh, dinala doon sa uh, foreign country. Ngayon, pinababalik na ni Persian King Cyrus, itong ating mga Hudyo. The books of Ezra and Nehemiah give an account of the Jews' return to their land, to, the, to, Jer- to Jerusalem. Sorry, nabubulal ako. <laughs> rebuilding of the temple and rebuilding of the walls. So ito yung nangyari sa libro na to. It's all about rebuilding ng temple at saka rebuilding ng walls. 
The Book of Esther, yung susunod natin pag-uusapan, no? eh, it gave an account naman sa atin ng mga nagstay doon sa land of captivity. So may mga nagstay din. Okay, so pag-usapan na natin, no? Ezra and Nehemiah, is about repentance, renewal, and rebuilding. So, ang tanong, ano yung dual ministry ni Ezra? Nabubulal ako dito. <laughs> Kasi meron akong kilalang bata, ang pangalan Erza. So, <laughs> paalala ko lang, Ezra. Ezra to. So, si Ezra, paalala ko rin, lalaki. Alam ko maraming Pinoy ang pangalan eh, Ezra, pero babae sila. So, parang ano yan eh, Maika. <laughs> Karang ganun. So, anyway. <laughs> Ezra... <clears throat> Excuse me. Ezra had the dual ministry, no? Ano tong mga roles na to? Basahin natin. Ezra 7:6. No. Came up of uh, came up from Babylon. He was a scribe skilled in the law of Moses, which the Lord the God of Israel had given. The king had granted him everything he requested because the hand of the Lord, his God, was on him. So, ano yung unang ministry ni Ezra? Siya ay isang scribe taga sulat no taga taga lista taga sulat ng ano ng uh, history okay at uh, <clears throat> ano pa isang ministry ni Ezra sa Ezra 7:11 no this is the text of the letter king Artaxerxes gave to Ezra the priest and the scribe an expert in the matters of the Lord's commands and statutes for Israel. So, hindi lang siya <coughs> scribe. <coughs> Excuse me po. <laughs> hindi lang siya scribe. No? Priest din si Ezra. Wow. So, dalawa yung ministry niya. No? Siya isang scribe at priest. Okay. Alam nyo, ang ibig sabihin ng pangalan na Ezra ay help. Yep. Tulungan tayo na wa ng Panginoon. Ezra did not lead the first group of Jews back to Jerusalem. That was done by Zerubbabel and Joshua. Ibang Joshua po ito. <laughs> Ezra comes on the scene in chapter 7. So dumating lang si Ezra sa bandang chapter 7 na yung, yung first chapters 1 to 6. Pag-uusapan, na na, pag-uusapan natin doon si Zerubbabel. Si Okay, so dumating siya sa chapter 7, mababasa niyo, siya, mababasa niyo siya doon, when he leads a smaller second company to the homeland. He remains there to labor and later joins with Nehemiah to accomplish the Lord's work. Ayan. So nagkaroon sila ng uh, reinforcement, no? na kumbaga, nag-team up sila ni Nehemiah. Kaya ang pag-uusapan nating libro ngayon ay eh, Books of Ezra and Nehemiah kasi uh, sila bandang huli, sila rin naman talaga yung tandem. Okay. The book of Ezra deals solely with the return of the southern kingdom. The people of the northern kingdom never returned from their Assyrian captivity for several reasons. Una, they had no survivors of the royal dynasty. No, they had no spiritual leadership to preserve their religion. And they lost their racial identity by intermarrying. So, ano ibig sabihin? Okay, ulitin ko lang. The book of Ezra deals solely with the return of the southern kingdom. Yung libro po ng Ezra ay nakafocus doon sa southern kingdom. Review lang. Ano ba yung northern at southern kingdom? Naalala nyo naman na Israel, pinag-usapan natin before, nahati sa dalawa, ang north at ang south. Yung north nila, yung ten tribes. Kung baga to sa atin sa Pilipinas ay uh, Luzon and Visayas. Yung southern kingdom nila, yun yung Mindanao. Okay? So, yun yung Judah. Ngayon, ang focus nito sa Libro ni Ezra ay yung southern kingdom. As, bakit? Kasi ano nangyari sa north? Kasi yung, yung people of the northern kingdom never returned from their Assyrian captivity for several reasons. So, alam nyo naman, mayroon tinatawag na uh, Babylonian Empire, may tinatawag na Persian Empire, may tinatawag na Assyrian Empire. So, kasi 
uh, lahat doon, na-capture sila, hindi na sila nakaalis pa no? doon doon sa Assyrian captivity na yon Bakit hindi sila bumalik doon sa 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 Jerusalem, back, sa ano no, sa kanilang uh, motherland, sa kanilang homeland? Kasi, no, they had no survivors of the royal dynasty. Okay. Ang royal dynasty uh, nagsimula yan kay King Saul, pero hindi niya naipasa. Bakit? Napunta kay David. Ang talagang may royal dynasty si King David. Okay? Si King David hanggang sa uh, bloodline niya papunta kay Joseph, yung tatay ni Jesus. Ngayon, yung sa kabila, yung sa kabila, naalala niyo si Jeroboam and Rehoboam. So yung mga dalawang boam na yun, so, sila yung dal- dal- dalawang haring naghati. Sa kabila, nawala, dun sa, sa Northern Kingdom, nawala na yung dynasty. Pangalawang rason, hindi sila makabalik kasi no spiritual leadership na nag-preserve dun sa religion nila. Unlike sa Judah, sa Southern Kingdom, na-preserve lahat to. no At yun lang, pinakamasakit doon, they lost their racial identity kasi nakipag-intermarry sila. No? Nakipag-intermarry sila, kaya, okay, tandaan natin, ang Southern Kingdom, uh, tribe of Judah, Benjamin, and some uh, another tribe, I forget another, I think Simeon or something. So, in part nun, uh, ang kanilang capital ay Jerusalem. Yung Northern Kingdom naman, ang kanilang capital ay Samaria. So, nakipag-intermarry sila. Yung mga tao doon, tinawag na Samaritans. Yung mga Samaritans, dinidespise nila yan kasi mga half-breeds. Eh, ayaw nila ng half-breeds. No? Kung baga, pa sa Pilipino, pag half-breed ka, half-pilam, no? pilam, Australian, Pilipino, Australian, or basta kakalahati ka, Korean, Filipino, whatever. Naku, sikat ka. Malamang pwede ka pang artista. Pero doon sa mga Israelites, ayaw nila ng ganun. Okay. The ten tribes of the Northern Kingdom were assimilated into the populations of the ancient Middle East and became the, la- the lost ten tribes. So, nag-assimilate na sila doon sa Middle East. So, the fate of the Southern Kingdom called Judah no, was quite different. They were able to preserve their worship and keep their ethnic and religious identity. Also, a descendant of David was taken into captivity with them. So there was a hope for the restoration of the, the yung Davidic throne. Kumbaga. In addition, and they had scribes and priests to preserve and taught the law. Yun, yun trabaho na Ezra. Scribe, sinusulat niya yung history mula doon sa simula at simula. Mula sa Genesis hanggang sa kanilang panahon. At sila rin yung priest na naging, nag-remain, no? Uh, na nagkakandakt ng kanilang mga spiritual worship. So pag-usapan natin, Pastor, ano bang nalalaman dyan sa Book of Ezra? May dalawang part. Chapters 1 to 6, it's about restoration under Zerubbabel. And chapter 2, at uh, chapter 7 to 10, restoration under Ezra. Hindi po under, under yan. Sorry, wrong spelling. <laughs> Simulan natin na restoration under Zerubbabel, chapters 1 to 6. Ano ba nangyari? No. Uh, meron kasi nga eh, sinulat dito, sa matatagpuan niya sa chapter 1, uh, verses 1 to 4. No. Meron ginawa ang Lord sa heart ni King Cyrus. Wow. Okay. Ano kaya yun? Basahin natin. Teka, pastor, sino ba si King Cyrus? Si King Cyrus ay isang mysterious Persian ruler. No? Uh, credited siya for helping Jews return from exile to Jerusalem 2,500 years ago. At nirebuild niya ang temple. Okay. Si King Cyrus ay uh, siya yung hari ng Persian Empire na nagpabalik sa mga Israelites. Ngayon, ang tanong, bakit? hinahalin tulad si King Cyrus kay President Trump ni Benjamin Netanyahu. Napan- napanood niyo ba yun? Ano? Nabasa niyo ba yun? Sabi ni Netanyahu, no, yung Prime Minister ng Israel, no, uh, pinuri niya si US President Donald Trump for among other things, declaring Jerusalem as Israel's capital and vowing to, pick, to fix or scrap the Iran nuclear deal. Wow. So, kaya naman si President Trump ay sikat na sikat 
sa Israel. Nako, kasi siguro malungkot ang Israel ngayon dahil uh, natalo si President Trump. Or hindi pa. I don't know. Uh, tingnan natin ang susunod na kabanata. Okay. I'm not trying to be political. I'm not for President Trump or President-elect Biden. No? Don't get me wrong. But I'm just trying to, you know, tell history and uh, anong kinalaman nito sa present time natin. Kaya gusto ko lang maintindihan nyo bakit ang tawag ng Israel kay President Trump ay the new King Cyrus. Kasi nga si King Cyrus, ang hari na hindi Hudyo, kundi Persian, na nagbalik doon sa mga Hudyo no, sa kanilang homeland. At ganun din si President Trump. Nasa ano kasi, Tel Aviv kasi yung uh, capital ng Israel. Ibinalik niya doon sa Jerusalem. Doon sa Judah. So napaka-historical. So ngayon, alam niya na. Diba? Yun yung maganda doon. Alam niya na. Okay. At first, only uh, 50,000 Jews took advantage of the opportunity to return to Jerusalem under the leadership of Zerubbabel. No, who? Sino ba si Zerubbabel? Siya yung grandson ni King Jehosh, Je, Jehoshin, Je, Jehoiachin. Jehoiachin. Si King Jehoiachin, kung tama saan yung aking pronunciation, ay descendant ni King David. No? So therefore, si Zerubbabel ay heir to the throne ng Judah, ng Southern Kingdom. No? At listed siya dun sa genealogy ni Jesus Christ sa so matatagpong dun sa Matthew no? chapter 1 to 12 to 13. Now, from this time on, the Israelites are called Jews. Bakit? Kasi most of the remnant were from the tribe of Judah. Ayan. Kaya Hudyo ang tawag sa kanila kasi galing sila sa Judah. Okay? So, kaya ang tawag kay Jesus Christ, diba? Lion of Judah. Yan, alam mo na. So, from Israelites, no? ibig sabihin lahat ng mga Israel, buong Israel, kasama yung buong 12 tribes, nahati sila, 10 tribes sa north, no? two and a half tribes sa, ito sa bandang south. Pero nag, uh, nakabalik yung mga taga-south, bagay yung mga Pisayas, parang gano'n, parang mga taga-Mindanao nakabalik. At kaya tinawag silang mga Hudyo kasi galing from Judah. Okay. Ang tanong, what does King Cyrus give to Jesh Bazar to take back to his homeland? Okay. So pinabalik sila ni King Cyrus. Okay. <clears throat> At uh, may binigay si King Cyrus kay Jesh Bazar para, para pagbalik nila sa kanilang homeland. Ano kaya ito? Basahin natin. Ezra chapter 1 to 7. King Cyrus also brought out the articles of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from Jerusalem and had placed in the house of his gods. Okay. Itong mga, ano, mga, mga importante sa Israelites, ibinalik ni King Cyrus na kinuha ni King Nebuchadnezzar sa mga Hudyo. At nilagay niya dun sa mga kanya mga santo-santuhan at mga uh, Diyos-Diyosan. Ano pa? Ezra 1 to 11. The gold and silver articles totaled 5,400. Napakadami. No, Shezbazar Shezba, brought all of them when the exiles went up from Babylon to Jerusalem. O oh, yun, dala nila yan. Pagbalik nila sa Jerusalem. Okay. Although the leaders of the remnant were... Uh, I'm sorry. Nawala ako. Okay. Palik tayo dito. When the southern kingdom, sorry na wala ako. When the southern kingdom no, had been taken captive 70 years before, only the upper classes were deported to Babylon. Okay. Balikan lang natin yung nangyari before. Okay. So, uh, alam naman natin yung mga upper classes dinala dun sa Babylon, the remainder of the people had been left in Judah to farm the land. So ito yung nangyari nung kinuwento natin last week. No? Uh, when King Cyrus decreed that these upper class Jews could go back to Jerusalem, only the earnest and faithful Jews wanted to go. Many of the exiled Jews had built homes and established relationships in Babylon. They did not want to break those ties, nor they did No, did they want to face the hardships of crossing the desert and rebuilding the city of Jerusalem? So yung iba, nagpaiwan na lang kasi meron na sila sigurong naging buhay doon, negosyo, na, karoon ng pamilya. So yung ibang upper class na iwan. 
although the leaders at the nice as I call all the leaders of the remnant were of the tribe of Judah there were some Israelites from the rest of the tribes but they were never to have the tribal identity again yon so iwan sila doon pero wala na kanilang tribal identity after no, a journey of 800 miles what from babylon to jerusalem nag journey sila kaya iba ay nasumama siguro kasi ang layo eh 800 miles no uh, ang 800 miles kung lalakarin mo yan or the driving mo from los angeles siguro to chihuahua mexico kasi 809 miles yun eh so ganun kalayo yung kanyang ten travel from babylon to jerusalem So, ang tanong, no, anong ginawa ng mga Hudyo pagdating nila sa Jerusalem no, after traveling ng 800 miles? Tingnan natin. Basahin natin. Ezra chapter 3, verses 3 to 5. Ito yung masarap na ano, eh, no? pag binabasa mo yung Biblia, eh, mas naiintindihan mo na siya. They set up the altar on its foundation and offered burnt offerings from the morning. Uh, for the morning and evening on it to the Lord, even though they feared the surrounding peoples. They celebrated the festival of shelters as prescribed and offered burnt offerings each day based on the number specified by ordinance for each festival day. After that, they offered the regular burnt offering and the offerings for the beginning of each month. And for all the Lord's appointed holy occasions, as well as the pre-will offerings brought to the Lord. Ay yung, siyempre, alam niyo naman eh, kustumbre na talaga ng mga Israelites sa mga Hudyo. Panahon pa lang na Abraham, kapag ka meron na isang magandang nangyari, lumipat, naglakad, alam na, nomads ng mga ito dati, di ba? So, lagi yan, set up ng altar. Kaya ikaw kapatid, no? Kaya may mga pag may pagbabago sa buhay mo, Lumipat ka, umayos ka, pumunta ka dito, pumunta ka doon, nabago yung sitwasyon, set up an altar. Build an altar for God. No, not a physical altar in a sense, kagaya na ginawa nila. What I'm saying is to set up an altar spiritually is that you focus more sa Panginoon no? para mas uh, magpasalamat ka at mas lumago ka pa sa Panginoon. Ayan. Then they start to lay down the foundation for the new temple. Okay, ano na nangyari? The leaders are approached by the Esarhadans. Okay. Esarhadans. Okay. Later known as the Samaritans with offers to help rebuild the temple. Okay, ano nangyari? Nung pagbalik nila, nagta-travel sila ng 800 miles. Okay, malamang to by foot. <laughs> 800 miles. So, kung ang ano ang um, ang uh, foot race or tinatawag na marathon ay 26 miles. Ay ilang full marathon to, matindi no. So, habang nagte-travel sila, no, eh pagdating nila doon sa sa Jerusalem, eh inapproach sila ng mga Sarhadans, no. At uh, kalaunan, tinawag na mga Samaritans. Uh, sino naman itong mga Samaritans na ito? Ulitin ko, ito yung mga breeds. No? Ito yung mga, ka, mga ka, ka, pinsa nila. Parang gano'n. No? Nag-offer to na magtumulong, i-rebuild yung temple. No? Pero anong reaction ng mga leader ng Judah doon sa proposition ng mga Samaritana na ito? Basahin natin. Okay. Ezra chapter 4 verses 1 to 4, opposition to rebuilding the temple. When the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the returned exiles were building a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel, they approached Zerubbabel and the family heads and said to them, Let us, rebuild, let us build with you. For we also worship your God and have been sacrificing to him since the time King Zardon of Assyria brought us here. Ay, kaya sila tinawag na Zardonites okay? or Zardons kasi yun yung hari ng Assyria dati. Kasi nga hindi na sila nakaalis. Eh. But Zerubbabel, Jesh- uh, Jeshua, no? hindi siya yung Joshua na, 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 
na umikot doon sa ano, iba yun, ninuno na nila yun. And the other heads of Israel's families answered them, You may have no part with us in building a house for, a, for our God, since we alone will build it for the Lord, the God of Israel. As King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Then the people who were already in the land discouraged the people of Judah and made them afraid to build. Ayan. <laughs> Medyo may harassment pa palang nangyari. No? <laughs> so, alam nyo, the opposition of Samaritans succeeds in bringing the work on the temple to a 15-year standstill. Ayan. So, hinarasara sila ng mga Samaritans. Kaya, medyo na-delay to ng 15 years. Nagkaroon ng standstill. Because of this, meron naman dalawang prophets na na-raise up ang Panginoon to encourage the people during those 15 years. Sino itong dalawang to? Si Hagay at si Zechariah. Diba? Kaya dito, sabi dito sa Ezra chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. But when the prophets Hagay and Zechariah, son of Edo, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, Jesh, Jeshua, son of Josedach, began to rebuild God's house in Jerusalem. The prophets of God were with them, helping them. Yon, si Hagai at si Zechariah. All right. Ay, alam nyo. With the encouragement of the prophets, ni Hagai at saka ni Zechariah, the temple is finished and dedicated within four years. Ngayon natapos din. It took a total of 20 years to rebuild the temple. But then the people were able to celebrate the Passover. Yan. Sayan na ng mga, ano, mga hudyo. So kung papansin nyo, yung temple na yan, yun yung, yung kung nasaan yung natawag na ano eh, yung dome ng mga Muslim ngayon. Yun, nandun yung site na yun. Alam nyo, the Bible leaves about 60 silent years. No? 60 silent years 60 silent years between the dedication of the temple and the arrival of Ezra okay 60 years bago dumating si Ezra the the only record of events during this period is the book of Esther which takes place back in Persia okay pumunta pinauwi sila ni King uh, Cyrus tapos Uh, pinangunahan sila ni, ni, ni Zerubbabel, yung descendant ni David. Tapos hinarang sila ng mga, uh, ano yun, ng mga Esadons, no? or tinatawag na Samaritans. 15 years na garan standstill. Pagkatapos, four year, after four years, nabuo yung, uh, yung kanilang pagbuo ng, ng temple, na-rebuild nila sa encouragement ni Hagay at Zechariah. Pagkatapos, nagkaroon ng 60 years na no, bago dumating si Ezra, pero habang yung 60 years na yon ang nangyayari naman doon balik doon sa sa Persia eh yung book of Esther naman na pag-usapan natin yan sa mga susunod na Wednesday. All right. So ano na nangyari? Pag-usapan natin yung part 2 ng book of Ezra. Ito naman kanina restoration under ni Zerubbabel, ngayon restoration na under ni Ezra. Chapters 7 to 10. Okay, ito yung matatagpo niyan pag binasa niyo. Alam niyo, Ezra, no, Ezra led another group of Jews from Persia to Jerusalem to, in, to reinforce yung mga hudyo na nandun na. Ang chief ministry ni Ezra, ni Ezra ay to teach the law and to restore the organized worship of Jehovah. So alam naman natin, scribe siya, priest siya, teacher siya at restorer siya ng worship okay, for Jehovah. Tradition says Ezra was the founder of the synagogue. Sabi nila, si Ezra daw yung nagpasimula ng synagogue o synagogue, which uh, came into being in the days of captivity. It was also Ezra daw ang nag-form ng scripture canon ng Old Testament. Wow! Napaka-accomplish pala na itong si Ezra. Okay? In the book of Ezra, we find the Israelites are continuing a practice that had been a major factor in the nation's downfall during the period of the kings. Nako, nung time na Ezra, ito na naman itong mga Israelites na ito, o particularly itong mga Hudyo, no, na, na may pinapractice pa rin, na kagaya ng practice nila noong dati pa. 
ano kaya ito? At uh, nag-cost na to ng uh, pag-downfall ng nation nila. Kaya nga nag-incaptivity na, 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 sila. Eh, basahin natin sa Ezra chapter 10 verses 10 to 17. Then the priest Ezra stood up and said to them, You have been unfaithful by marrying foreign women, adding to Israel's guilt. Therefore, make a confession to the Lord, the God of your ancestors, and do His will. Separate yourselves from the surrounding peoples and your foreign wives. Mm. Yan na naman. Pag intermarry na naman sila. In verse 12, then all the assembly responded loudly, Yes, we will do as you say. But there are many people, and it is in the rainy season. We don't have the stamina to stay out in the open. This isn't something that can be done in a day or two. For we have rebelled terribly in this matter. Let our leaders represent the entire assembly. And let of those in our towns who have married foreign women come at appointed times, together with the elders and judges of each town, in order to avert the fierce anger of our God concerning this matter. Only Jonathan, son of Asahel, and Jaziah, son of Tikva, opposed this with Meshulam or Meshulam and Shabbatai, the Levite, supporting them. The exiles did what had been proposed. The priest Ezra selected men who were family heads, all identified by name, to represent their ancestral families. They convened on the first day of the tenth month to investigate the matter, and by the first day of the first month, they had dealt with all the men who had married foreign women. Yun naman pala. Eh, may kakulitan din mo kasi itong mga yung problema nila nun. Kasi nga, kapag ka nagpakasal ka sa mga foreign women, they will lead you to other gods. Kagaya na nangyari kay King Solomon. Eh, kaya tayo, eh, yun, siwasan natin na kung mga ma-influensyahan tayo. No? Alam nyo, uh, ang hudyo nga pala, no? Teka, linawin lang natin. Ang mga, kasi ito mga hudyo kasi, uh, hindi sila forbidden to marry Gentiles who worship Jehovah. Okay? Naalala nyo si Rahab at saka si Ruth, no? These are good examples. But uh, iba naman yung klase nito. Iba naman to mga to eh. Kasi ito, actually, naging lola pa ni Jesus Christ. So iba, hindi sila katulad nung uh, dinidescribe ng mga ini-intermarry ng mga hudyo na nagdilid sa kanila astray. So anyway, ay, yun, yun yung ano, yun yung nangyari kaya sa Book of Ezra. So game ka na ba sa Book of Nehemiah? Okay, nabilis lang to. Ano naman ang nangyari sa Book of Nehemiah? It's about rebuilding the broken walls. Alam nyo, the temple had been rebuilt and uh, worship had been established, but walls of Jerusalem Jerusalem still lay in ruins. So, na-rebuild na temple, pero basag pa rin yung walls. So, these walls had to be rebuilt if the city was to survive. So, ano nangyari? Kasi importante yung walls eh. Okay? Uh, yung walls kasi, uh, it protects you from the enemies. So, God raises up Nehemiah for this task. Ayan. May specific task si Nehemiah. Kung may katabi ka ngayon, sabihin mo sa kanya, alam mo, Mayroon kang specific task sa Panginoon. Yan. Kung kay Ezra maging scribe, maging priest, no, si Nehemiah naman, eh, siya yung rebuilder, re, <laughs> rebuilder ng broken walls. Ayan, basahin natin. Tingnan natin, ano, mo, ano ba matatagpuan natin? Sa, ano ba yung brief outline ng uh, book of uh, Nehemiah? Number one, yung rebuilding ng city walls. Chapters 1 to 7. No, so parang rebuilding ng Intramuros. Uh, kung pamilyar kayo sa Intramuros, mapansin niyo siya. No, uh, doon sa may Manila. No, uh, ang ibig sabihin ng Intramuros is uh, a city within the wall. No, parang kumbaga sa loob ng, ng wall, merong city. So ganun din to, i-rebuild nila yung walls na to. No, sa chapters 1 to 7. And then number 2, importante to, reviving the people. Dito na nag-team up si Ezra at si Nehemiah. Chapters 8 to 13. Okay, basahin muna natin. Magsimula tayo dun sa rebuilding the city walls. Chapters 1 to 7. Yan. Pag binasa niya yan, alam niya, matatagpuan niyo dyan. No? Nehemiah had risen to the trusted position of cupbearer for Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Okay. 
Sino si Nehemiah? Siya ay isang cupbearer ni Ar- King Artises. Oh, teka. Nasaan si King Cyrus? Wala na. Eh. Bago na. Bagong administrasyon na to sa King of Persia. Siya ay King of Persia. At ang kanyang cupbearer ay si Nehemiah. Oh, so taga talaga ng Starbucks coffee. Hindi. <laughs> siya yung, ang, ang trabaho niya is to taste the king's wine to check kung may poison. May hirap na trabaho yan. Pero sa totoo lang, ang cupbearer ay hindi lang taga taste of uh, king's wine. Hindi ka lang taga tala ng kape o kung may kape na nung araw na yon. Uh, ikaw ay sa, kung cupbearer ka, sa mga panahon na yon, ibig sabihin, isa ka sa pinaka pinagkakatiwala ng hari. Ibig sabihin, favorite ka ng hari. Ibig sabihin, kumbaga, secretary ka, chief assistant ka. No? Kumbaga, personal, ano ka niya, uh, aid. Kumbaga, kay Duterte, eh, ikaw si Bongo, parang ganun. Yan, yan yung trabaho ni Bongo, cup bearer. Okay. Ang mga naging senador na ngayon. <laughs> anyway, when Nehemiah hears of the sad condition of his people in Jerusalem, he becomes distressed. Ayan. Nalungkot si Hinihimaya kasi nalaman niya yung sad condition ng mga tao kasi yung wall nila sira pa rin. For four months, after apat na buwan, no, he grieves and prays for them. So umiiyak siya, pinapanalangin niya yung mga tao niya sa, sa, sa Israel, no, sa, sa Judah. No. Ah, I mean, parang ikaw na nag-grieve ka, umiiyak ka pagka may grief talaga. Makita mo yung mga kapabayan mo sa Pilipinas sa sinasalanta ng bagyo. So, ganun yung nararamdaman ni, ni Nehemiah. So, when the king, si Artisarses, no, detects Nehemiah's gloom, anong ginawa niya? Eh, syempre, eh, paborito ka ng hari. Eh, may ginawa si King Artisarses kay Nehemiah. Basahin natin. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 2 to 8. So the king said to me, Why do you look so sad when you are sick? Malungkot ka, di, wala ka naman sakit. There is nothing but sadness of heart. Sabi niya, naku eh, malungkot ang puso mo, Nehemiah. Sabi ni king of Persia, I was overwhelmed with fear and replied to the king, May the king live forever. Why should not be sad when the city where my ancestors are Buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Then the king asked me, what is your request? So I prayed to the God of the heavens and answered the king. If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor with you, send me to Judah and to the city where my ancestors are buried so that I may rebuild it. The king with the queen seated beside him asked, Asked me, sabi ni Nimaya, how long will your journey take, and when will you, you and when will you return? So I gave him a definite time, and it pleased the king to send me. I also said to the king, if it pleases the king, let me have letters written to the governors of the region west of the Euphrates River, so that they will grant me safe passage until I reach Judah, and let me have a letter written to Asa king of the king's forest so that he will give me timber to rebuild the gates of the temple's fortress, the city wall, and the home where I will live. The king granted my request for the gracious hand of my God was on me. Wow! Boom! Grabe! No. Ay, sabi nga, the hand that rocks the cradle. <laughs> Alam nyo, napakadami atang... Uh, influential na tao na madami nagpapasalamat no? doon sa mga naging nani nila Pinoy, naging yaya nila Pinoy, naging teacher nila Pinoy, di ba? So, ganun din to eh. Kumbaga, sa, sa White House yung, si, yung chef doon, Pinay yung, sa, sa, I mean, madami no? sa mga royal families, may mga Pinay na staff or whatever ganun din to eh. Servant si Nehemiah who found favor kay King Artis Reses ng King of Persia. Imagine, no? yung mga request na safe passage. No? Bigyan mo ako ng uh, letter kay Asaf, yung King of Forest, para mabigyan niya ako ng timber, para ma- mapatayo ko to. Ba, ma- matinding project to. Matinding project to. Mabigat to. Hindi to basta-basta. Kaya, ano nangyari? So, 
Tingnan natin. Sa part 2, chapters 8 to 13, ano na nangyari? Okay. Yun. Pero bago yan, sabi dito, Nehemiah goes to Jerusalem with the authority of King Persia to, ju- to rebuild the walls, therefore acting as governor of the city. Wow. Cup better ka ni King Artaxerxes. Naging governor ka ng city kasi nasa yung letter na hari. He, re- he organizes the reconstruction by assigning a portion of the walls to each family. Each group has a supervisor. So, kada pamilya, pinigyan niya ng isang part ng wall na bubuin. Bawat group may supervisor. Kaling, magaling na manager si Nehemiah. Under Nehemiah's leadership, the walls that had remained in ruins for about 100 years after the return of Zerubbabel are rebuilt in 52 days. Wow! Malupit. <laughs> Okay, so part 2. Ano naman nangyari? Chapter 8, chapters 8 to 13. When the walls were completed, eto na, Ezra returns to Jerusalem to assist Nehemiah in dedicating the walls and sanctifying the people. So, ang role ni Nehemiah to rebuild the walls. Ang role ni Ezra, maging pastor. Okay, Ezra stands upon a pulpit of, the, of wood and reads the law to the people. The reading of God's word Sparks a revival. Nagkaroon ng revival. Ay, I wish na magkaroon sana uli ng revival sa Pilipinas. Ay, I wish na magkaroon sana ng revival kaya nangyari sa Azusa Revival. Doon sa part ng Los Angeles, lalo na sa ministry namin, kaya na nangyari dito kay Ezra at ni Himaya. The reading of God's word sparks a revival. No, reading pa lang yun. Hindi ko alam kung nag-preach pero reading pa lang. Eh. What feast, no? what a feast talaga na nangyari after ng revival na yun. No? Kaya madami mga feast na binanggit natin doon sa sa, sa Pentachok na pinag-usapan natin no? na, na pinatupad ni Ezra at saka ni Himaya. Alam niyo, the achievements and faith of Ezra and Himaya can hardly be overemphasized. Without Ezra's teaching and Nehemiah's leadership, the Jewish religion and community probably could not have survived. Kaya ito eh, itong mga to underrated tong sa Ezra at Nehemiah. Kung alam lang na maraming Kristiyano, na mga maraming Hudyo, alam, 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 alam na maraming Hudyo yan. Pero yun tayo mga Kristiyano, naku, malaking pasalamat natin dito kay Ezra at Nehemiah. At the close of the book of Nehemiah, the Jews are in their own land, but still under Persian rule. No further records of the Jews is found in the Bible until the birth of Christ in the New Testament. Wow! So alam naman natin after ng Persian Empire, eh, madami pang empire ang uh, Roman Empire na sa panahon ni Kristo no, ang sumakop sa kanila. Alam niyo, libro ni Ezra at, uh, at Nehemiah ay patungkol sa repentance. Ito ay patungkol sa renewal at patungkol sa rebuilding. Kaya sana ang puso natin ay uh, matuto sa dalawang libro na to kapag binasa natin. Importante ang pagbabalik loob sa Panginoon. Importante ang pagbabago ng puso. At uh, importante ang pag-rebuild ng buhay. Kagaya ng ginawa nila doon sa temple at saka sa walls of Jerusalem. Manalangin po tayo. Panginoong Ama sa Langit, maraming salamat po sa napagandang gabi na to. Thanksgiving po, pero unang-una po, kayo po ang gusto naming bigyan ng pasasalamat sa ginagawa niya sa buhay namin, sa lahat ng tinuturo niya sa amin, sa patuloy na pagpapala at pagpoproteksyon sa amin. Panginoon, pinag-uusapan po namin na ang Book of Nehemiah ay tungkol sa repentance tungkol sa renewal at tungkol sa rebuilding. Dalahin ko po, Panginoon, na kami po ay lumapit sa inyo at tumingi ng tawad. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Just like the Jews before those times, I am a sinner. But I believe that you died upon the cross for me. That you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of my sin. That is renewal, Lord God. That is renewal. And I believe that on the third day you rose from the dead and went to heaven to prepare a place for me. And that is rebuilding, Lord. And that is rebuilding. 
accept you now as my Savior, my Lord, my God, my friend. Rebuild my life, Lord God. Make me new. Renew me as I repent to you. Come into my heart and set me free from my sin. And because you are my Savior, I shall not die, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you po. Ayaan niyo po na uh, i-bless ko po kayo sa gabi na to at sa Thanksgiving season na to. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Huwag niyo pong kalimutan every Sunday, 9am to 11am Wiley Chapel, 3401 West 3rd Street, Los Angeles, California. Uh, niyo pong LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Sa panahon po ngayon, mga workers lang po muna ang nagsisimba at uh, nagiging production team para po mayatid sa inyo ang virtual service. Pwede po kayong manood every Wednesday and Sunday sa Facebook and YouTube muna. At uh, pagka po nag-announce ang gobyerno na pwede na, eh, di tayo po ay karoon din na feasting, kagaya. <laughs> kagaya na ginawa ng mga Israelites. Huwag niyo po kalimutan na mayroon po kami ginagawa na website under construction ngayon, ang lafilnas.org. You can email us at lafilnas at gmail.com. Uh, pwede po matagpuan ng aming Facebook account sa, at saka Instagram account L, uh, at LA Filnas. At meron din po kaming uh, YouTube channel, LA Filipino Nazarene. Hindi po kami vloggers, pero, <laughs> pero nilalagay po namin sa YouTube yung mga videos na to para po maging pagpapala sa inyo o gusto nyo ma-review at uh, gusto nyo pong uh, mag-aral pa. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa gabi na to. Uh, ito po ang inyong LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Muli, uh, nais ko pong uh, batiin kayo ng Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, isa pong napakagandang Wednesday ng gabi para sa inyong lahat. Sana po safe kayo, malahi sa sakit ng COVID-19. Pagpalahin kayo na one and just. God bless you. Bye.